starts now. Good evening, I am Justin Betty. Polls have been closed now across Wisconsin for about two hours on an election day unlike any other. We have Decision 2020 team coverage of everything going on tonight. We'll look back at how voting worked today, the process of counting the votes in just a few minutes. But first, Newswatch 12's Dan Hagen joins us now live on set with a look at some of the early results. Dan? Well, results are pretty much what we'd expect so far. Early leads for Republicans in the northern part of the state in a close race statewide for the presidency. That's where we're going to start. Donald Trump is currently leading 50% to Joe Biden's 48%, 55% reporting. Now let's go to some more local races. Like I said, the Republicans are leading as you'd expect. Rob Swearingen with 65%, Kirk Banks said with 35%. That's about with half of the precincts reporting. Now moving to the Southwest, Calvin Callahan with a big lead over Tyler Ruprecht, 71 to 28 percent, only 12 percent reporting there, but it seems like a victory for the Republicans there. And this one was one to keep an eye on. Beth Myers is a Democrat. She's defending her seat in the Lacta Flambeau, Price County, Bayfield County area. She is currently up 52 percent to 46 percent with about 37 percent of precincts reporting. OK, now to the state Senate Representative Mary Falskowski. She's leading Ed Vokey pretty much two to one right now, 66 percent to 33 percent with 31 percent reporting. Now to the congressional race up here. Tom Tiffany with 62 percent, Trisha Zunker with 38 percent percent reporting. That's bigger than the current margin. Sorry, that's larger than the margin of Zucker's earlier loss this year in the special election. We're going to have more results from you in the more southern parts of our district later in the show. Back to you, Justin. All right, thank you, Dan. Wisconsin also, as Dan mentioned, a key state, a battleground state in the race for President Newswatch 12's Andrew Goldstein joins us now live at the Hodag Dome in Rhinelander with more on how the Northwoods may factor into that race tonight. Andrew? Well, Justin, it seems like there's not a whole lot worth watching when it comes to local returns and the presidential election. I mean, barring anything truly unforeseen, we imagine that Donald Trump is going to carry not just Oneida County, but most of Wisconsin's 7th Congressional District. After all, if you go back to 2016, Hillary Clinton won just one of the 17 counties that comprised North Central Wisconsin. That was Portage County, and it doesn't seem to be too much different this time. However, my, what you may want to watch out for as the results roll in is not necessarily who wins, but what their margin of victory is. Ben Wickler, the chairman of the Wisconsin Democrats, said he had hoped to see Joe Biden poll in the low 40s in Oneida County. Hillary Clinton captured just 39 percent of the vote in Oneida County. But it's worth remembering that Mitt Romney only beat Barack Obama by less than 500 votes here in 2012, and Barack Obama won this county in 2008. So there is a history of a Democrat vote in the not too distant past here. Now, like I said, President Trump probably going to win. But if you watch the results roll in and you start seeing Joe Biden in the low 40s, Democrats are hoping that that will be enough to keep Republicans from offsetting losses in other parts of the state. If, however, you see Biden in the high or even mid 30s and Donald Trump running ahead of where he was in 2016, that might spell a close election and potentially another upset victory for the president. So again, not so much about who wins here as what the margin says about not just Wisconsin, but demographically similar Midwestern states in Michigan and Minnesota. So as the results start to roll in around midnight tonight, watch for those results, everybody. All right, thank you, Andrew. One of the big storylines this year was the huge amount of absentee ballots cast. Wisconsin Election Commission reported nearly 2 million people had already cast their ballots before Election Day, and a lot of folks were curious that would take away from the lines at the polls today. Newswatch 12's Rachel Perry was in Eagle River as polls closed tonight and has more. The polls have officially closed, and while there's no longer a line here at Eagle River City Hall, those counting votes said today's turnout could have been the largest they've seen in a really long time, stating that they could be here all night just counting those votes. Let's check in with Cooper Hankel over in Crandon. As you can tell with the no mask, there are no lines out here in Crandon. 
I'm all by myself in this empty parking lot, but the poll workers busy inside tell me that's a big change from earlier in today. Like everywhere else, Forest County and Crandon in particular was busy and voter turnout was higher than expected. We'll be waiting throughout the night and probably into tomorrow as we hope for results on all of the elections. Justin. Thank you. That does seem to be the trend tonight. People came in to vote early today if they had not voted early already, and then it kind of trailed off as the day went on. Aside from any potential delays from simply counting the mass number of ballots this year, one county in Wisconsin is expected to see some additional delays tonight because of a technical error. Among the issues, election officials say it, it, in that ballot misprint in Outagamie County will likely delay counting some of their absentee ballots. It's a scratch, no longer than a fingernail, on one of the timing marks, the bottom right edge of the ballot, very small technical issue. Officials became aware of this issue a few weeks ago. They say about 25,000 ballots were affected. This was discovered during a testing of the polling place equipment there. Election officials say it will not impact the voting or the election results and voters no need to do anything else if their ballot had this misprint. It only means that the poll workers there will take longer than usual to process the ballots in Outagamie County. Again, simply counting the record number of ballots has become a big issue this year across the country, an epic task. News Watch 12's Rachel Eiler spoke to volunteers in Wausau earlier today and gives us a look at that process. That I noticed to myself, the paper's beautiful. I don't have any paper cuts. Nearly 12,000 absentee ballots just for one city. Since polls opened at 7 a.m., these workers have been slicing and counting every single one. It, it excites me that people have cast their ballot. Um, they made sure that their vote was going to count. Um, obviously, it's a little bit of extra work for us, but that's okay. That's what we're here for. For the last few months, the amount of mail-in ballots coming into Wausau has been exponentially higher than in years past. Having 12,470 ballots requested, only 678 not returned. Wausau City Clerk Leslie Kramer says it's eye-opening, but not unexpected development. I thought that we would have a high return, yes. Um, quite this high? No, I, I'm, it's, I'm definitely pleased. Workers are moving fast to get every one tallied, having scanned over 6,000 ballots within the first seven hours. Um, I tell you, it was a little overwhelming when I first saw all the boxes stacked on top of each other. I thought we'd be here until the wee hours of the morning, um, but it's, it's a really efficient process. But there's still work to be done. For Diane Schwartz, this is her first time volunteering, finding it more necessary than ever. And while it's been smooth sailing for the most part, some voters still concerned about their vote counting. We did have quite a few people that called um, maybe about three weeks before the election and said, I've decided I don't want to do the absentee ballot, so please cancel my ballot. So yes, we did have a lot of that this, this election. For those ballots not returned, while it's too late to mail it back, officials hope they're heading to the drop box, still accepting ballots until 8 tonight. Or the polls, as Kremer hopes to see this election as one of the highest voter turnouts ever. That's News Watch 12's Rachel Eiler reporting. We'll have more election results to get to you in just a few minutes. But first, one thing I think we can all agree on on this partisan night is that it was a beautiful day today. News Watch 12 Chief Meteorologist Jeff Weller is in to tell us how long that will last after the break. News Watch 12's election coverage is brought to you by Merrill Steele. Toyotathon is on. Now's the time to get a great deal on. Tacoma, RAV4, Camry, and more. I'll take it. I'll get this wrapped up for you. I wish I hadn't just unwrapped it. <sighs> right now, during Toyotathon, you can get 0% APR financing for 60 months on a new 2020 Toyota Camry. Toyotathon is on. Come in today. Toyota, let's go places. Advice from trial attorneys, lawyers, for the injured. Personal injury law is what we do. It's who we are. We have the ability and the guts to run the insurance company to the ground. Hire the Mater legal team. Get Mater tough. By now, I'm sure you're aware of the rapidly increasing health care costs. At Merrill Steel, we're doing something about it. And that's why we build on-site clinics at both of our locations. 
And when care is needed right away, same-day appointments are available. Astia Health can treat a wide variety of ailments, from common everyday illnesses to serious injuries. Hello. Oh. I wish to inquire about your free phone deal. Is there anything hidden I should be aware of? No, sir. No hidden plan requirements? You choose your plan. No hidden phone trade-ins? Keep your phone. No hidden activation fees or other trickery where video recorded evidence would be beneficial? None. Interesting. Lovely scarf. What camera? Get the latest phones free with no hidden requirements. U.S. Cellular. Upgrade to FAIR. There you are. You and I get to change gears and talk weather for about the next four minutes. And look what we did today. That is a 70 here on Election Day 2020. And we could do it all over again tomorrow. Even a few mid 70s with we'll Pack looking at you. 74 today for a near record high. All right, so here is the record today 70. We tied the record set back in 1978. But also look at the sunset now is at 441 in the afternoon this time of year. All right, looking outside right now, check out these 10 o'clock temperatures. It's 55 still in Rhinelander, 49 for Anigo, 49 for Point, 55 with Paca. So this is not normal. Keep in mind, the average high temperature this time of year is in the mid 40s. Currently, we are in the mid 50s here at 10 o'clock at night. All right, and there's just a lot of heat across the Midwest right now. Uh, we're building this up still, too. And it's going to sit right over us for several days. In fact, we have uh, 60s, even low 70s back in the forecast for tomorrow and for Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then some changes get in here on Sunday to Monday. We actually have some snow back in the forecast for Monday. Well, here's that trend going forward. So 66 tomorrow. And then we're going to hang out near upper 60s, even a couple low 70s in there through Sunday. But then the bottom falls out. Out. All signs now pointing toward next week, Monday. We're going to push a cold front through, change the wind out of the northwest, and bring in some precipitation that will likely begin to snow on us again on Tuesday. Uh, but still, there's still five days to get through to get there first. Let's enjoy the warm temperatures, right? Looking outside now, we have lots of clear skies across really the entire Midwest and the Great Lakes. This is enjoyable and unusual for this time of year. And, you know, when are we going to pay for this? Well, we're going to pay for it this weekend at the end of the weekend. As you can see now, the storm track is uh, lifted to the north across parts of Canada. This is highly unusual for November. Normally, it's like down here right somewhere. Uh, but this will begin to collapse on us this weekend and bring us some rain snow mix on Sunday and Monday. And that will likely change the snow on Tuesday. And then we have much cooler temperatures back in the forecast for next week. Here's first match. You can see lots of high pressure across the Midwest right now. So high pressure, this ridge right here, firmly in charge until Sunday. So great weather, lots of sunshine, sinking air, good weather for us until Sunday, followed by some big changes on Monday into Tuesday. The forecast tonight, though, is mostly clear skies and not so cool, with low temperatures down near 40 and a calm wind after midnight for tomorrow. All right, so mostly sunny once again, highs mid Upper, even low 70s in there tomorrow uh, with a southwest breeze around 5 to 10. And then looking ahead, your seven day forecast by Northwest Furniture and Mattress shows we're dry tomorrow and Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday with temperatures in the 60s, even a few low 70s in there. Check out those lows too in near 50 over the weekend. But then things begin to happen late Sunday into Monday. A cold front approaches, rain Monday changing to snow on Tuesday afternoon. Justin. All right, thanks, Jeff. Well, the weather was no reason not to vote tonight because it was beautiful. A local cab company in Rhinelander was offering free rides to the polls, so there is no excuse for folks not to get out and vote today. It's the first time Rapid Cab Company has offered this free transportation on Election Day. Organizers say they feel it was important for the elderly and for those who were unable to drive to still have the opportunity to submit their ballot in person. We thought it would be a good uh, service to provide to the people. Uh, there's a lot of people that don't have means of getting there. Again, engagement was high this year, so voters we talked to say even if they couldn't find a ride, they would have found a way to make their political voice heard, but they were grateful that the company made that a bit easier this year. Well, not every voter has a chance to vote and play a crucial role in determining who wins the race for president. Usually it's like a dozen states that really matter. But folks here in Wisconsin do, including first time voters. News Watch 12's Georgina Fernandez has details. Everyone has a reason why. If I want to make a change, I better vote. And many of this election. Are you registered? 
answered yes for the first time ever in Wisconsin. My vote today is going to make a, you know, make a difference. Michelle Hannon moved to Wausau from California. The move not stopping her from casting her vote. I feel good being able to finally cast my vote for the president I'm wanting to see in office today. And it comes as a relief as a Trump supporter, now feeling more comfortable to discuss her political views. I feel like I can get into a political debate and not be completely ostracized from. But she's not the only new voice to be heard this year. I can use it as a way to bring about change. Elijah Tyson is a high school senior who's already 18, providing a voice for his class of 2021. A lot could happen either way, and with what I believe, I feel like I should vote because I don't like what, uh, or I don't believe what the other guy is, uh, is saying. And during a time of much political tension and uncertainties, these new voices could be the determining factors in the outcome of this election. It's going to be a very, very close election this year. Um, like I said, both candidates have good and bad qualities to themselves, but I think every vote's going to count this year, especially this year. In Wausau, Georgia Fernandez, Newswatch 12. And more numbers from across the state are coming in as we speak. When we come back, we'll have some more results and more of our big local races, especially those towards central Wisconsin. You're watching Election Night Decision 2020 coverage here on Newswatch 12 at 10. Hi, I'm Kristen from Sleep Central on Highway 51 South in Manaqua, your bedding and futon headquarters. We carry the largest selection of name brand mattresses in northern Wisconsin, in stock and ready for immediate delivery. Beautyrest, Sealy, Serta, Stearns & Foster, and Tempur-Pedic. We also have a huge selection of accessories to complement your bedding purchase. Sleep Central also carries a wide variety of futons and unique bedroom furniture with quality all wood construction. Better sleep, pain free, that's our promise at Sleep Central in Manaqua, your one-stop sleep shop. Get a stylish solution for every room with window treatments and save 11% off everything at Menards. Get room darkening vinyl and aluminum blinds, faux wood blinds and cellular shades, trim to width for free, or order a custom style and size. From durable, economical options to stunning custom designs, you'll find the perfect window treatments to transform your space. Right now, all window treatments are 11% off at Menards. Save big money at Menards. It's that time of year to winterize, shrink wrap, or store your boat inside at American Marine and Motorsports in Shawano at great rates. Or keep using your boat this fall. Trade it to American Marine by November 30th. Pick your new dream boat from the biggest showroom in the USA and pay no storage or winterizing fees. Plus, no payments and no interest until spring delivery. Lowest prices guaranteed. Boat lovers, it's time to shrink it, store it, or trade it to American Marine and Motorsports. Shawano. Different ideas for shopping this year? Both your wishes can come true when you buy the diamond of her dreams from Wickersham Jewelry during their Diamonds and Deer event, November 2nd through the 7th. She gets the diamond she's always wanted, and you get free hunting gear from one of your favorite outdoor stores, Bullseye Sports Shop, Charlie's Hardware, or Mills Trading Post. Take advantage of 36 months interest-free financing during the event. Wickersham Jewelry, where everyone's dreams come true. Coming up on your Wednesday, we'll have continuing election coverage throughout the morning. Stay with Newswatch 12 for the latest updates. And weather is going to be very nice and quiet, Peter. We'll have more coming up when you tune in on your Wednesday for the latest election results. Wisconsin is expected to be a key battleground state in the race for president this year and is shaping up from early voting like a tight race again tonight. But there's also a number of state and local races we are following this evening. We continue our Decision 2020 team coverage now at Newswatch 12. Zach White live here in studio with a look at some of those early results from these different races. Zach. Justin, first we're going to talk about Wisconsin's Assembly District 69. Donna Roser, who is now 63%, and now Brian Giles is at 36% with 50% of the reporting done. And next we'll look over to Wisconsin Assembly District 70, where Nancy Vandermeer is at 70% and John Ivor Baldus is at 29% with 46% reporting. Wisconsin 71st District is next with uh, <clears throat> With Scott Soik and Katrina Shankland, Scott Soik is at 36% and Katrina Shankland is at 63%. And next up, we're looking at Wisconsin's 70, 72nd district with Scott Krug at 58% and, and Christy Greening with 41%.
Now, next up, we're looking at Wisconsin Assembly District 85th with 67% and Jeff Johnson with 32% or 85% reporting. And then next, we're looking at 80, the 87th District with James Edming, who is up with 74% with Richard Poulter at 25% with 42% of those results being reported. Next, we're looking at the Wisconsin Senate race with District 24. Patrick Tesson is at 61% and 38% for Paul Petrusky with 29% being reported. And next, we're looking at the Wisconsin 3rd Congressional District with Derek Van Orden, who is at 50% right now, and Ron Kine trailing at with 49% with 24% reporting. We'll keep you updated with more of these results as the night goes on. Justin? That's a big race there and a tight one to follow. Of course, Ron Kine, a multiple-term incumbent there as a Democrat, getting a tight battle right now from his challenger there, the Republican um, Derek Van Orden in that race. All right, coming up, we'll have more po uh, results to keep posted on. We're going to take a quick break, take a little break from the election stuff. We're going to take a look at a new unusual local playground encouraging kids to connect with nature. That's next here on Newswatch 12 at 10. Yeah, well, look what I did this weekend, huh? Your weekends brought to you by American Marine and Motorsports in Shawano and Honda Motors. We have more boats and pontoons in stock than anywhere else in Wisconsin. Check them out in the largest showroom in the USA. Buy or trade into a new boat and get out on the water today and we'll give you the best deal guaranteed by at least 500 bucks. Get the most out of your weekends with Honda Motors and American Marine and Motorsports Shawano. From the kennel to the coop, whatever the season, Fleet Farm has everything to keep your animals happy and healthy. Whether you're getting them through the winter season, mastering those retrieval skills season, or wondering who takes care of who season, there's a reason people say, if Fleet Farm doesn't have it, you don't need it. Because we have it all. Fleet Farm, built for real life. At WJFW, our News Watch 12 news team works around the clock to bring you the news that matters most of all to the North Woods. Our team is committed to the community and ensuring that you are as informed as possible. The News Watch 12 team works hard to deliver the most important stories from around the globe, local and national sports updates, and weather reports. We are NBC News Watch 12, news from where you live. What if you could push a button and lower your mortgage payment hundreds of dollars? You can. The button's on your phone. Call Zoom Refi. Slash your mortgage payments. Take cash out. Zoom Refi mortgage rates are super low. Closing costs are super low. And Zoom, we approve you right over the phone. No big mortgage payments. No high closing costs. No income check loans available. So no reason not to call Zoom Refi. 888-272-8630. At WJFW, our News Watch 12 news team works around the clock to bring you the news that matters most of all to the North Woods. Our team is committed to the community and ensuring that you are as informed as possible. The News Watch 12 team works hard to deliver the most important stories from around the globe, local and national sports updates, and weather reports. We are NBC News Watch 12, news from where you live. There's new numbers today that neither Republicans nor Democrats were likely wanting to see. Wisconsin set another record for most new COVID-19 cases in a single day. Those according to the latest numbers from the State Department of Health Services. DHS reports 5,771 new cases today. DHS also reports 52 new deaths. That's not a record, though it is, as you see, above our seven-day average of 36 new deaths. In our 12-county North Central Wisconsin region, DHS reports 192 people in the hospital with COVID-19. That is a new record. They say 33 of those are in the ICU. The University of Wisconsin football team announced today this weekend's football game against Purdue has been canceled as the team deals with the COVID-19 outbreak. UW says there are now 27 people, 15 players, 12 staff members, including coaches who have tested positive for COVID-19. And it's also the second game the Badgers have had to call off because of the outbreak. The first was this past weekend scheduled game against Nebraska. Wisconsin
Wisconsin needs to play at least six games to be eligible to play in the Big Ten title game. That means if just one more of their scheduled games gets canceled and not made up, they would not have enough games to qualify for that. Well, tensions are high today. We're going to take a little break from both politics and COVID-19 news and talk about something that should make nearly everyone smile. Newswatch 12's Morgan Johnson gives us a look at a playground in the area that is encouraging children to put down their phones and tablets and connect with nature. They're all over this thing, which is great. Trees for Tomorrow is opening its doors for kids at their new nature playscape. We're exposing kids to nature and that's what we're here to do. The campus needed a way to introduce young kids to the world around them. Trees for Tomorrow received a $10,000 grant from Lumberjack RC&D. We figured it was a, a nice add to uh, programming that we already have available here at Trees for Tomorrow, which introduces kids to nature through um, fun and play and experiences like that. This isn't just any ordinary playground though, as opposed to just slides and swings. All of the elements in the, the playscape are from nature. Uh, you know, we literally harvested pretty much everything out of the woods around us. The nature playscape challenges kids with things like stepping stones, a timber pyramid, a story circle, a nature TV, and a tree TP providing what Ginner calls the best way to learn. The frame that's behind me here, it's kind of our nature TV, so kids can see a portion of the forest and how it changes from, from season to season throughout the year. The kids love the nature TV, but their favorite? I really don't know <laughs> if there is one favorite element because, I mean, they're all over this thing, which is great. Uh, but most of all, it gives kids a break from screens. In our day-to-day -day lives, we are just connected more and more to technology, and we're just disconnected from the natural world around us. Connecting to nature while having fun. As you can see, the kids are having a blast out here, and I think because it's so different, they're really drawn to it. In Eagle River, I'm Morgan Johnson, Newswatch 12. We have some more numbers coming in, including an update on the race for president in Wisconsin. We'll bring that to you as well as some more local numbers coming up after the break. Stay with us. Hi, my name's Chad. I went and saw a neurologist and had several MRIs and they found out that I had spinal neuropathy. The neurologist at the hospital decided that the only treatment was medication. I didn't find that acceptable, so I called Spinal Aid to get a free consultation. After working with Spinal Aid, I'm able to walk, I'm able to sleep, I have balance, my overall comfort of life is 100% better. Are you experiencing weakness, numbness, and or pain in your feet or hands? These sensations might even be affecting other areas of your body along with your balance. You might have already been diagnosed with peripheral neuropathy and are taking drugs such as Lyrica, Gabapentin, or Cymbalta that never seems to help. Neuropathy pain ultimately diminishes your quality of life. The Spinal Aid Center of Wausau can help relieve the symptoms of your neuropathy. Call Spinal Aid of Wausau today to see if our treatment methods are right for you. Call 715-203-1508 to schedule your neuropathy severity consultation. Do you have a drawer full of knives but nothing sharp? Introducing the Bavarian Edge, the innovative knife sharpener with independent spring action arms that will make your old blades razor sharp in seconds. Look, it's so different because it has two independent spring action sharpeners made of ultra hard tungsten carbide that flex and contour to any blade or angle. It can even sharpen serrated knives. This frozen steak is rock hard, and a butter spreader isn't for cutting. But after just a few passes through the Bavarian Edge, it's so sharp it cuts right through this frozen steak like a hot knife through butter. Bavarian Edge can even sharpen a credit card. It cuts this tomato with ease. Call now and get the Bavarian Edge knife sharpener for just $19.99. Now you can double the offer. Just pay a separate fee. There's more. We'll ship it to you free. Click or call right now. Call 1-800-851-3036. That's 1-800-851-3036. Call or visit BavarianEdge.com. Order now. At WJFW, our News Watch 12 news team works around the clock to bring you the news that matters most of all to the North Woods. Our team is committed to the community and ensuring that you are as informed as possible. The News Watch 12 team works hard to deliver the most important stories from around the globe, local and national sports updates, and weather reports. 
We are NBC News Watch 12. News from where you live. Hi, I'm Justin Williman with Miracle Ear of Marshfield. If you're struggling to hear your favorite news and entertainment shows, stop in and see me for a free hearing test. We'll still probably be several hours until we get final numbers from here in Wisconsin for election results tonight, but we do have some more numbers coming in. Let's go now to Newswatch 12's Dan Hagen with a look at some of those here tonight, including the presidential race, Dan. That's right, Justin. That's where we're going to start, where Donald Trump has actually widened his lead. He's up 51 to 46, 47 percent right now, with 71 percent reporting. We're going to look at some, uh, some assembly and Senate races first, but I want to remind people that Republicans are hoping to pick up three seats in the Assembly and the Senate to get that veto-proof majority. Up here in the Northwoods and the northern part of the state, they're mostly playing defense. All right, so let's go to our 34th Assembly race. Kirk Bankstead is still down. He's still down 65 to 35%. That's with 58% reporting. Now to 35th Assembly District, Calvin Callahan is up 70% to Tyler Ruprecht's 30%, though we are very much up in terms of numbers we're reporting. We're back up to 41% reporting. Let's go to the Assembly District 74. This one, Democrats are actually playing defense. Beth Myers is up. She's up 52% to 48%. That's 64% reporting. That's going to be one of those tight races. Now let's go to the State Senate. Representative Mary Falskowski, who is seeking Tom Tiffany's old seat, is facing Ed Vokey. He's down 33% to 67%. That'll be my final result right now. Actually, now we got them on the, on the screen here with 45% reporting. That's Ed Vokey down 33% to 67%. And that's all we got with those Assembly and State Senate races. And by the way, Tom Tiffany's up 62 to 38 right now in the seventh congressional race. It's Justin? A wider margin than he did one in the special election back in May. Thank you, Dan. We'll send you back now in just a minute to the NBC national coverage of Decision 2020, including more on the race for president. Thank you for joining us tonight. Have a great night.